The fairy tale and the short story are two different things. If we compare both, we can say that the fairy tale is oral tradition and memory, whereas the short story is written tradition and memory. The fairy tale takes place in ancient times. The short story is usually around recent events. In the fairy tale we have fantastic elements, whereas in the short story the setting is real. We are dealing with realism. In the fairy tale, there is morality and education at stake. The short story is not meant to socialize. Finally, the fairy tale has symbolic characters, characters that represent an idea, characters that symbolize people, an epoch, the society of a time. The short story has characters with psychological depth. So they are much more developed, they're better developed. The differences between the novel and the short story is also quite striking. In the novel, we have many forces in presence. We have different characters that fight, we have different settings, we have different events. In the short story, we have one single couple of characters or social worlds. In the novel, time passes slowly. In the short story, we're dealing with an event that takes place rapidly, during one evening, for example, during one day, during one week. In the novel, there are many psychological developments. In the short story, we have few characters and we have psychological consistency. The novel offers many places, the short story normally only one place. Let's now look at a few definitions of the short story. Many people have tried to define the genre. We'll give you a few possibilities that are mentioned by different authors. It's a rather short literary narrative. A narrative is a story. Usually we can expect the story to be between a few hundred words or 30 pages. It is characterized by a more concentrated narration than the novels. We have fewer characters and the series of events are less complex. Another definition would be a short piece of prose fiction having few characters and aiming at unity of effect. Finally, another definition mentioned literary work normally centered around one single event, the psychological repercussions of which are being studied. The short story presents a restricted number of characters with their own psychological depth, which is different from the fable characters who stand as symbols and we have all real beings. The psychology of the characters is not studied with detail in contrast, as in the case of novels. So the psychology of the characters are under the magnifier. So we look at very small details of something, but not many things in detail. We're not contrasting many things. We want to study the psychology of the character without focusing on all the details. The short story is only a fragment. It's not the whole picture. The story's intent is to produce an impression of reality. So, a few common features among all short stories are, it's a literary narrative, so we mean it's a story. And literary means written for the sake of the pleasure of reading. It is a work of fiction, which is between five and 50 pages. The number of pages is not important as much as the urgency in telling the story. It's a restricted topic. The short story presents one single event and reveals only a short period of the character's story. The event is not developed in great length. The number of characters, events, and spatial temporal details are limited. All the actions are linked to a core element or a so-called nub, which is a chosen instant. The nub is the essence, the core of a story. The short story's concision makes a strong impression, a feeling of strangeness and mystery, which was highly prized during the Romantic period. Quote, Many authors regard the short story as the genre which allows no simplicity and no compromise which are granted to novelists who can count on the general impression of a long literary work in which less perfect details are easily forgotten in a narrative of considerable length. The short story is a close-knit text, with no place for useless details, with an acute sense of economy 
and relevance. Let's have a look at what Romanticism is all about. Romanticism is a literary movement of the late 18th century. The characteristics of it are heightened interest in nature, emphasis on the individual's expression of emotion and imagination, departure from the attitudes and forms of classicism, rebellion against established social rules and conventions. So nature is very important. We usually have in these stories somebody who walks through the park, into the forests, discovers nature, describes the wind, looks at the sun, the sky. And we're looking at the emotions that are arisen by these phenomena. So this is the second element of our uh, definition. We are not interested in a specific form that was already classified in times of yore. The short story addresses an adult audience. The short story is a brief narrative intended for an adult audience. It is opposed to the fairy tale, which is intended to children, with a tone adapted to a juvenile audience and with a simplified world. The short story offers a realistic story. The story is centered around an event, the character in the foreground. There is a real endeavor to describe the action with realism. We're dealing with psychological repercussions. So the main character's frame of mind is central. The character's reflections, feelings, hesitations, moods take up a large part of the narrative. The external disruptive event is often only a pretext to study the character's reactions, allowing him to highlight the depths and complexity of man's spirit. Now we can see that there is an event that is going to disrupt the normal course of events of the character's uh, daily life. Without this essential psychological aspect, studying what happens in someone's mind, in someone's psyche, the short story would merely be a brief story. The short story usually ends unexpectedly. The ending is expected to culminate in an unexpected twist, a strong moment of the story, a sudden clap of thunder. The whole story normally converges on this surprise denouement, as if the whole text were only accessory to the story's final disclosure. The ending forces a new interpretation of the text. The denouement's purpose is not only the surprise for the sake of surprising, but to force the reader to reinterpret the events in the story. If we go back in time to see the origin of the short story, we can speak about the Middle Ages first. In the Middle Ages, there were short narratives. We have them in the fablios, in the epigrams, morality plays, lays, exempla, and body folk tales. A fablio is usually something metrical, ribald, which is very often sexual, humorous, the sake of which is only to make people laugh, and was popular in medieval France. It's something that rhymes. The fablio is an octosyllabic poem, which means it has eight feet, or eight syllables if you want. It is light, it is lively, it's spoken language, written in Old French, the same language uh, that we find in Rabelais, with puns and, and rhymes. And it's the life of the peasants living in the countryside. The epigram is a short and often satirical poem dealing concisely with a single subject and usually ending with a witty or ingenuous turn of thought. The morality play is a drama in the 15th and 16th centuries using allegorical characters to portray the soul struggle to achieve salvation. The lay is a narrative poem such as one sung by medieval minstrels. You have one in Tristan and Isoud, and an exemplum it's a brief story used to make a point in an argument or to illustrate the moral truth. So these are all genres in literature that come before the short story, that tell a story, that depict events of their times. The short story, if we look now at the Renaissance, 14th and 17th century, it's the beginning of the printing press, and it favors the short story's rapid development. So new themes are explored. 14th century saw the advent of major forerunners of the short story as the Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer. Written in Middle English, this story is a series of events counted inside of one book. It is the story of people going onto a pilgrimage and to pass time, each one of the passengers tell a story that happened to them. And so each chapter is a different story counted by somebody different. 
And so we have a series of little stories that are independent and not connected to the rest of the book. So we think that the Canterbury Tales is actually a good example of a first book containing short stories. Cervantes is the first to propose a definition of the new genre. He proposed briefness of the text, predominance of action and of the dialogue, a work that should entertain and serve as an example. As you know, Cervantes is the one that wrote the long novel Don Quixote. The hero of in the Renaissance is the individual who asserts himself against a rigid and bygone system of values. In the 17th century, we find narrative simplicity, psychological analysis, and verisimilitude. The difference between the novel and the short story is still not very clear at this point in time. In the 18th century, the narratives show more realism and concision and endeavor to be more didactic. The hero is endowed with more individualism. The Germans make it their national genre. The writers scrutinize the depths of man's souls and his destiny. The genre is not as realistic as before. The hero is either looking for the blue flower or his demoniacal alter ego. The short story opens itself to metaphysics and turns towards the fantastic tale of E.T.A. Hoffman, Ernst Theodor Amadeus Hoffman. Hoffman is the author of The Sandman. This is a very in interesting short story. A boy finds himself threatened by his father's partner, who come to his laboratory every night to try to turn metal into gold. And this boy hears the story that if he doesn't go to bed early, the Sandman will come, will put sand in his eyes, and it will remove with its long beak his eyes to feed his babies. This story received an interpretation by Sigmund Freud that is called The Uncanny. If you're interested, I would recommend that you read it. The Nutcracker in the Mouse King is probably the story that you know about. It was set to music by Tchaikovsky, and that's the Nutcracker Suite that is performed every Christmas all around the world. The Doubles is another story by E.P.R. Hoffman, and you can also read the life and opinions of Tomcat Murr.